whole body rotation is probably one of the more visually curious or interesting pieces that we use in the clinic. As you can imagine, for people that feel lightheaded, dizzy, they have headaches, you know, they're not doing great. Their brain is not working the way they'd want. The idea of spinning around in something like an amusement park ride feels a little bit foreign, but actually it's a really beautiful tool to be able to help people calibrate the senses that help us understand where our head and our body is in space and particularly relative to gravity. So when it comes to the problems that we experience in neurological conditions, one of the simple concepts that we can boil it down to is this idea of perception. And that perception is like, am I accurately processing all of the things that are happening around me and within me? So when it comes to people that experience symptoms that are related to just getting blood flow into the head, right? All of our hypoperfusion type symptoms, we have to realize how important it is to tie in an accurate perception of where you are in space to the process of being able to do all these automated features like deliver blood to your head. So that is where the gyrostim comes in because it allows us a tool to be able to improve, to alter, and to, to really accelerate our ability to detect where we are in space by providing a very specific type of stimulation. Turns out on the planet, it's really hard to escape gravity. Go figure. So to be able to calibrate all of these different signals and systems back to understanding where gravity puts us on the earth is a really important part of navigating the world. So that's why a lot of the, the kind of the common symptoms when we look at neurological injuries are ones that actually misplace where we are in space. So we use whole body rotation, or in this case, uh, gyro stim, as a method to be able to start to couple back things that we see with the way that our eyes are moving, the way our inner ear is perceiving movement, and the way that our body is perceiving movement at the same time, but we can dose it way back so that we can calibrate them all to act linearly in whatever plane of movement that we want at whatever dose that we want, and then we can monitor it so that we can actually help people be able to do things like, hey, the way that my visual system and vestibular system are calibrating the world is not working great. By using this tool, it gives us a stimulus that we can get a reliable signal from both of those at the same time so that we can start to put them back together and exercise or train these areas of the brain that are responsible for integrating these areas, which is really cool. A lot of people that have problems with that calculation are problems actually in the areas of the brain that are designed to be able to, to solve these problems to start with. So to give you an example, like, Everybody's head is shaped a little bit different for whatever reason. And our inner ear is all cut out of our skull. So if we have skulls that are a little misshapen, but the vestibular system is cut out of that, we kind of rely on them to be 45 degrees to one another like this and then like this. So those little canals are cut out of the bone and like little tunnels. And we need them to be oriented that way so that we can move along the directions and feel where we're moving. But if they're augmented slightly, like they're not quite at actually 45 degrees to each other, how does your brain deal with that, right? That's why we have different areas in the brainstem, particularly in an area that we refer to as the neural integrator in the brainstem that is able to take in those inputs from each side, match them together, match the vestibular information together, match the proprioceptive information from our body together, match the visual system together, and actually does a little bit of calculus so that we're able to modify those signals. So even though they're not perfect, our brain knows how to make them perfect, which is absolutely amazing. But when we get an injury in those areas, neural integrator or the, the areas that help to calibrate it or feed to it, then we have a problem in our ability to be able to judge that integration and to be able to modify, modify it on the fly the way that we're normally accustomed to. And that's where we see that ceiling start to hit where people can't actually like progress through that because the part of the brain that should calibrate it isn't able to. But the tools that we use in whole body rotation in combination with other tools as well help us to be able to stimulate that area so that it can improve its ability to calibrate again and so we can get all of those different systems to match up and get back online. So one of the ways to think about it would be like if you ever look at Google Maps or you know whatever your map of choice is when you're driving your car, sometimes if that map isn't dead on, 
you know, you're looking at where you are on the map, but then like where the arrow points you is like way over here and you have to wait for it to calibrate and find actually where it was. Right. And that's one way that you can think about how our brain maps us in space. So if we're in a spot that if we're doing a thing, that's a little more complicated, you're driving on the road, you're in a store, you're at a ball game, things that have more processing coming in that neural integrator may have a harder time being able to deal with all of that stimulus at one time. And then it may lag. And when it lags, it, our brain kind of feels just like that pin in the Google map where it drifts off into a different place. And then it's got to try to find its way back And that drift off is kind of what we experience for a lot of people as the symptoms of kind of not feeling where you are in space. So this also has applications in autonomic problems because that is part of what helps us to create the underlying environment for our autonomic system to work. So if I don't have a good sense of where I am in space, my autonomic system is using all of that information to be able to run all of these reflexes underneath uh, blood flow de delivery, breathing, temperature regulation, et cetera, et cetera. So um, the gyrosim has actually been a super useful tool. We've been using that particular model or one like it for over a decade, which is kind of crazy to think about. Um, and to see the applications are really cool. What's really interesting, though, is actually for a lot of people, using it in a really small dosed way is is wildly effective in one of the things that's actually fun to watch because people expect to be whipping around in circles but actually a lot of times we're using these really slow calculated movements that help people calibrate that system again so if you're curious about that uh, let us know i wanted to give you a little bit of an introduction to some of that uh, interesting equipment that you might see on, on some of the videos and why we use it and why it's important for the cases we see.